is it possible to outperform the market? Is it possible to beat the market? Money. Mindset. Is it possible to outperform the market? Is it possible to beat the market? Yeah, it's possible, but it's really difficult. Or Why rather, it it's difficult. difficult. It's difficult to be consistent. Okay. And I would question the need to beat the market. All right. So let's set our stall out right from the start. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, you and I are all about sort of helping ordinary people understand their finances better, right? And investing is part of that. My contention is that investing is the easy bit, right? We'll no doubt add some meat to that as we go along here. But, uh, you know, even the professionals struggle consistently to beat their market. Only about one in five professional fund managers consistently beats the, the market with any kind of regularity. So you'll very often see somebody who's top of the pile this year, be fourth quartile, you know, bottom 25% performer over three years or five years or whatever. And then he or she might bounce back up again. And it's very, very difficult to consistently beat the market. And those are professionals, right? They're I, supposed to know what they're on about. <laughs> but the, they, they are professional, I agree. But a lot of the fund managers are not actually looking to outperform the market. If you look at the money that's going in, are just there to keep wealthy people wealthy. Essentially, yeah. they don't want to beat the market They because they, most of their clients essentially they're, they're high net worth individuals, the clients that I used to work with, and they're just that they don't want their clients to lose money. That if you look at kind of loss aversion, the actual people are tw two and a half times more scared or they get mm -hmm. more fear of losing their money than actually gaining the market. So a lot of these fund managers, yes, they're professionals, but they, they want to keep their clients happy. They don't want to be losing their money. They're not actually, they're, they're, the game, their aim is not to beat the market. Their aim is to look after and avoid loss. I'm thinking they don't put that on their literature though, right? You know, because it's not a, not a great sell that, is it? You know, pay yeah, us exactly. three quarters of a percent a year and we'll just do exactly the same as what you could get if you just tracked the market. Exactly. So I'm a passive investment advocate and I'm, yeah. I, you know, I totally understand there's tons of views on this and I think active fund management has its place. Let me know if we need to define that. Uh, passive and active would it help just to confirm do you think listeners will be happy with that yeah i mean passive it's essentially tracking the the market which is 100 biggest companies or that's a FTSE 100 where you're essentially you're not looking to beat the market whereas active you're kind of picking individual stocks thinking that actually you're going to beat the market yeah exactly right so if you've got a universe of available funds your example uh, you know available shares rather your example of FTSE 100 you've got 100 companies roughly in that index you either pick and choose which ones in a bid to beat the market as a whole or you just think well sack that i'm just going to track the market if you think the FTSE 100 is a good place to invest right now then you just say okay well i'm going to buy the market the key thing there neil is massive cost savings and yeah. compounded yeah. cost savings over time um and so my contention is that if you can't consistently beat the market why would you even try i just think it adds an extra level of risk so yes of course it's possible to beat of course it's possible to outperform the market people do do it all the time but I just think it's uh, for most ordinary people, that's a poor use of their time and energy trying to beat the market. I think they can add significantly more value in other ways. I agree with a lot of what you say. I guess the question would be, what is the market? If you're saying actually FTSE 100, these are the top biggest companies in the UK that are listed in the UK. And these are big lumbering companies and they tend to be very slow moving. So if there's a, a book called... Um, uh, Jim Slater is a really good fund manager, probably one of the best UK fund managers. And he says that elephants don't gallop. And he uses the example, I love analogies. And he uses the example of these big FTSE 100 companies are like elephants and they move really, really slowly. Whereas he's, if you think of small companies, small FTSE 250 or kind of smaller than that, these can actually move quicker than the market. I mean, I'm a big advocate of evidence, looking at the evidence. What, yep. what is the evidence? And there's a number, there's, a number of huge amount of research that's been done. It's, there's been quantum leaps in the amount of research that's yep. been done and about of the actually the amount of Nobel Prize winning economists. So the, the, the information is out there, but I don't think we talk about the ordinary person. I don't think the ordinary person realizes that you can actually, I, I believe you can beat the market by doing simple things like looking for small companies rather than big companies, rather than the FTSE 100 company. You look at momentum and you mm -hmm. can look at value. And yeah, also- absolutely. You can look at, we talk about the FTSE 100, which is the UK is a tend to be a, a developed country. We're kind of mm -hmm. on the kind of scale. But if you look at emerging markets or growing countries, if you buy sm smaller growing countries or companies, 
then these can actually grow quicker than the FTSE 100. Yeah, more volatile ride on the way, so you need to be prepared for that. I mean, you and I, Neil, you know, the, our li- listeners to our podcast, readers of our stuff, we're going to tend to, by definition, attract people who are more interested and engaged with this stuff. And so, you know, I talk to clients all the time who come to me through the podcast and they've been managing their own money perfectly well for decades, right? So my contention is that, yeah, of course you can beat the market. And if you want to put the effort in to try, then fill your boots. It's your money. You know, you do what you want to do. Um, I tend to uh, believe that it's easier to more consistently add value uh, by uh, making sure you're aggressive about costs, tax efficiency, and things like that, yeah, because those things really compound right. massively. So it's you know there's plenty of ways to skin a cat. Yeah. And what one thing I I really take issue with very often is people use the word should a lot when it comes to their finances. What should yeah. I do here? What is the best thing to do? Best. There is no should. And there is no best. There's a million ways to build wealth. And there's a million places you can focus your energy, all of which will add value. One of them is trying to beat the market. I just, most people I come across haven't got the energy or the time or can be bothered to to do that. In which case, where can they more consistently and more easily add value? And that's what I tend to talk about more often. So, yeah. So we're on the same page. Just, you know, it's a a big book with lots of different pages and chapters and options. Money. Mindset.